Good Wednesday morning to you folks. Hopefully you had a good night's rest. Everything's going well with you. I would say hi to Mr. Delbert there, Delbert Von Allman in Myrtle Beach, and hi to Miss Arlene Saunders. Um, both 94 years old. Both live in Myrtle Beach. Both have been uh, great friends to me and um, just allowed me to visit with them and just enjoy the time when I worked there and lived there. Um, if I was back there, I'd have to fix you two up, I guess. <laughs> but uh, I pray you have a great day today. I was thinking this morning, um, I sang a song, I believe, yesterday on the morning devotion. A song that I had heard uh, Randy Travis sing. And he had had, I don't know, four or five gospel CDs. And I had them all. Probably have them somewhere around here. And, and I always enjoyed listening to him sing. And, and uh, there were some songs that I'd never heard until he did them. And so I had a song on my mind this morning. And I'll read you a piece of scripture. I, I woke up uh, uh, thinking about... Uh, not only this life and how we live, um, but but when we leave, what we really leave that impacts anybody around us. You know, I mean, I'm going to leave some guitars. Somebody's going to get instruments. <laughs> um, unless I sell them all, or something happens before I go, I'm going to have some guitars that my children, grandchildren will get. There are going to be some things uh, from Teresa and I that uh, our kids uh, would receive. But it's more than just about the physical. I mean, while you're here, what you can do for the Lord is the most important. And when you're gone, the result of the life you've lived, of what you've, what you've given to those around you, can live on. Uh, for eternity in the life of a soul who has accepted Christ because you were obedient to him. You know, um, we talk often, say the world needs more kindness. Well, where does that start? Uh, you, uh, people that say it, and we say it often, we got to know where it starts. It has to start in the home. It can't start at the school because if kindness isn't in the home, uh, you might not be able to teach that to that child in the school. So it's got to start at home. Love, forgiveness, kindness, uh, nurturing that small child uh, and allowing them to grow in a society where uh, they know that they need to love the folks around them and to care for them. There's a lot of things that you could leave um, for your children. You could leave behind. Um, I know my boy um, has liked certain ball teams because I liked them. There are certain things that uh, that he liked, and probably our daughter as well. There are certain things that she liked, maybe because uh, her mother or I uh, did. Sometimes you influence your kids in those ways. My um, greatest hope and prayer is, is that uh, through all my faults and my failures, um, not just when I'm dead and gone, because I will be someday, but, but that my children and my grandchildren will be able to see that Jesus Christ is the most important thing uh, to have uh, happen to you. Uh, the experience uh, of coming into a born again relationship with Christ is the most important experience. It it, it outweighs uh, marriage, birth of children, all those things. All those things are great. Don't get me wrong. But when we die, there's a place for us to go to for eternity, and to prepare while we're here because. Because folks, people who have never made preparation to meet the Lord, they're going to die too. They'll, they will have been married. They will have children. They will die too. We're all going to leave here. When we do, it's most important that we go to be where the Lord is. Um, and I can't stress it enough, uh, even on these short little morning devotions that 
in order to be right with God. We just simply need to ask the Lord to come into our heart to forgive us of our sin and to repent, to turn from that way, to go be with the Lord. I, I know I've had people in my lifetime, I had a guy uh, ask me one time uh, if I would do him a favor. He was, he was actually 94 years old when he asked me this. And I said, what is it? He said, when I pass, will you speak for me? And he said, I mean at my funeral. I said, well, I understand what you mean. I said, well, let me ask you this. I'll, I'll do you a favor if you do me one. And he said, what is it? And I said, before you die, will you talk to the Lord? You want me to speak for you. I want you to speak to the Lord. Will you speak to him? You talk to him. You ask him for forgiveness. His daughter said to me, she, he was staying at her home the night he died, and his daughter said to me after uh, his funeral, said, George, I don't know who he was talking to, but she said I'd get up and go in there, said, and, and uh, he was talking to someone all night long. And my only hope and prayer is that he was talking unto the Lord. First Kings chapter 2 the scripture says, Now the days of David drew nigh that he should die, and he charged Solomon his son, saying, I go the way of all the earth. Be thou strong, therefore, and show thyself a man, and keep the charge of the Lord thy God, to walk in his ways, to keep his statutes and his commandments and his judgments and his testimonies, as it is written in the law of Moses, that thou shalt prosper in all that thou doest, and whithersoever thou turnest thyself. Here's a, a dying king, the apple of God's eye, telling his son um, to be strong, to be courageous, to put God first, to follow him. So this song says that it is not uh, what you have in this life. It's not uh, what you're taking with you but it's what you leave behind. A farmer and a teacher, a hooker and a preacher, riding on a midnight bus bound for Mexico. One was headed for vacation, one for higher education. And two of them were searching for lost souls. That driver never ever saw the stop sign. And eighteen wheelers can't stop on a dime. There are three wooden crosses on the right side of the highway. Why there's not four of them, heaven only knows. I guess it's not what you take when you leave this world behind you. It's what you leave behind you when you go. That farmer left a harvest, a home and 80 acres. The grace and love for growing things in his young son's heart. And that teacher left her wisdom in the minds of lots of children and did her best to give them all a better start. That preacher whispered, can't you see the promised land? As he lay his blood-stained Bible in that hooker's hand. There are three wooden crosses on the right side of the highway. Why, there's not four of them, heaven only knows. I guess it's not what you take when you leave this world behind you. It's what you leave behind you when you go. That's the story that our preacher told last Sunday. 
as he held his blood stained Bible love for everyone to see. He said, Bless the farmer and the teacher and the preacher who gave this Bible to my mama, who read it to me. There are three wooden crosses in the right side of the highway. Why there's not four of them, now I guess we know. And it's not what you take when you leave this world behind you. It's what you leave behind you when you go. There are three wooden crosses on the right side of the highway. Not what you take, folks. Not what you have. It's what you leave behind. Uh, hopefully you're leaving behind a path of hope and peace for your children. Lord, I thank you for the day you've given us, God. I pray that you would bless and encourage those that watch this, Lord. Those that uh, listen and those that are faithful to listen and watch weekly. God, that you would encourage them, give them help and strength today. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, folks, and see you Thursday.